dear colleagues i am so happy to be talking to university teachers universities as we know are the centers for creation of knowledge dissemination of knowledge generation of knowledge augmentation of knowledge and there are certain stages with which all of you are familiar we are at this stage for the last 2 years discussing we have been discussing the nation, national education policy 2020 after about 37 years a policy has come in the sector of education and all of us in fact have eagerly awaited its arrival several of us have in one way or the other contributed its development and finalization we have now the strength of this policy consist in terms of the analysis of experience that we have conducted the experiences that we have gained of the post independence period they have all been all of them have been put into this making of this policy and therefore for the first time we have a lot of things that we could discuss here in this particular uh, interaction about teachers i recall a statement made by gunnar bedel in his famous treatise the asian drama it was published in 1968 or 70 and was received world over they discussed what would be the shape of progress and development in the newly independent countries he focused on asian countries he has mentioned the teacher education institutions teacher preparation institutions or organizations are the power plants of quality for these countries see the focus it meant that every ideology of progress and development every plan and project of progress of development will depend upon how competent committed and performing your teachers are which means how do you prepare your teachers how a nation prepares teachers and how the teachers in turn prepare the nation the new generation the generations ahead so he said these are the power plants wherever you prepare your teachers and i would like uh, all of us to comprehend that we are not talking only of school teachers teachers at every stage if teacher education institutions are doing their job then these teacher educators have to be the best of the well equipped persons in the professional fields they will prepare good teachers and when good teachers go to school they will prepare good products when they go to universities they will focus on creation of knowledge and generation of knowledge and new knowledge assimilation of knowledge they will also develop analytical capacities how a new change is to be interpreted and how it is to be utilized if at all it is to be utilized it is also worth remembering that every change is not worth being accepted as such change is everywhere but progress is not everywhere what we need is change with progress and this is the basis of this policy and the whole policies implementation will depend upon teachers and i will repeat this several times during this interaction you see i remember when i entered the university in the 60th in the 6th and 5th uh, decade of the last century there was hardly any provision for orientation of university teachers we learned from our senior teachers the numbers as all of you know were very small of the universities but reputations were very high the credibility was very high the reputation of individual teachers university departments was was very high because what we observed was the level of commitment competence and a desire to grow regularly the growing up was very important now at this stage let me tell you 
that I would like to refer to the policy rather indirectly in several occasions. We'll come to some of the direct uh, quotations from the policy also. But I have before me a book which was written in 1932 and the title was Remakers of Mankind. The writer was Carl Washburn. Carl Washburn. He had an interaction with Gandhiji and he said, what would be your goal in education? You see, I'm referring to something like 1930 or so. Book was published in 1932. He asked Gandhi at that stage, what would be your goal in education? And all of us know, Gandhi was working very hard on education. And we'll make some reference to it later on. So, Gandhi's goal in education, he said, in one single term was, my goal would be character building. And then Washburn writes that Gandhi further told him, I will try to develop courage. Now, see, these are the things that will determine the role of university teachers in the new education policy, in the National Education Policy 2020. I try, Gandhi says, I try to develop courage, strength, virtue, the ability to forget oneself in working towards great aims. What more could be said? This is more important than literacy. Academic learning is only a means to the great end. And this great end has four terms, extremely important terms, which every teacher has to internalize. The terms are courage, strength, virtue, and ability to forget oneself in working towards great aims. What more one could expect? Now, if we go to what the policy says several times, the Indian tradition of learning, we all have to comprehend what is the ancient Indian tradition of learning, which produced wonderful treatises on knowledge, scholarship, and so on. Their intuition, their efforts, their tapasya, could be seen in the scriptures that India has from ancient times and which have attracted the attention of the world more than over two centuries ago, it all began and it continues. It has not yet been uh, fully comprehended. Now, the very process of education in the current context has to remember one more thing and each, all of us have to remember that no country can go ahead with a transplanted system of education. We have been talking a lot about this. We had criticized this system also very much. But now the national education policy gives us a system without any critics criticizing anything of the past. It gives us a future-oriented system. And as teachers, we have to grab the opportunity. Uh, I would like to refer to a small um, uh, term In, for the role, we shall use the term Uttar Daith. Uttar Daith is something which arrives from, in the Indian tradition, from the three debts that every one of us inherits as we take birth in this country. Our ancestors told us, that when a person is born, he is indebted to or he is in debt of, he, has, he owns three debts. First, pithred, debt to the parents, to the family. Devarin, the debt to the nature. And Rishirin, the debt to those who have created knowledge, generated knowledge, and given us ways and means by which we are using that knowledge. And I will not go into elaborating these, but I would mention that if we analyze these in the current context, it refers to family bonds, our obligations to families, society. It refers to our obligations to nature, and it refers to our obligations to the knowledgeable, to the learners, to the Ghanis. Now, if you see the problems of today, because you shall be preparing, you are preparing, the young persons who will develop the ideology of progress and development ahead. 
so if you go around these three you will see most of the problems arise globally and nationally because we have been unfair to comprehension of these three basic postulates of how to live a human life if we had taken care of our debt to the nature if we have understood aparigraha things would have been very different we would not have been holding meetings uh, international conferences and confabulations on climate change on uh, pollution of air pollution of water and so, so many other environmental uh, pollutions but we did it let me tell you the world of education is not the world of information alone information necessary it is not a world of knowledge alone knowledge is necessary but it is also necessary on the part of teachers to comprehend the gyan and buddhi suchna jankari chahiye gyan chahiye buddh chahiye aur isse bhi ilaka hame vivek bhi chahiye the rich heritage of the policy let me quote from the policy how it summarizes this the rich heritage of ancient and eternal knowledge and thought has been guiding light for this policy now this we have to comprehend this will give us continuity of the ancient indian tradition of knowledge quest to the present knowledge scenario the pursuit of knowledge gyan wisdom pragya and truth satya was always considered in indian thought and philosophy as the highest human goal this is what our ancestors did and taught us by example of their own efforts the aim of education in ancient india was not just the acquisition of knowledge as a preparation for life in this world or life beyond the schooling but for the complete realization and liberation of the soul world class institutions in india such as takshila nalanda vikramshila vallabhi set the highest standards of multidisciplinary teaching and research and hosted scholars and students from across backgrounds and countries why people flock to a particular institution because of the credibility of the institutions and credibility of the teachers every university is known by the contribution of their teachers and which teachers who understand their role their uttardayitva to the new generation to the society to the aspirations of the young and expectations of the nation it all depends on the teacher again link it to the gunnar medals uh, th- thesis this is what it has been said here also and the policy expects that once again our universities will rise to the level of takshila nalanda interpreted in the current context and we shall be able to attract people we need not announce that we are going to become vishu guru if we move ahead it is others who will come to us and say yes you are the vishu guru because you have so much of the storage of knowledge so much of systems of creating knowledge that we would like to be part and parcel of it there is one more um, paragraph that i would like to refer to it but before that let me mention that when the unesco's delos commission report was released in geneva in 1996 i was present there and this as all of you know was the report of a commission independent commission appointed by the unesco to consider and give ideas on the shape of education in the 21st century jack delos gave a speech at that stage and said education in every country must be rooted to culture and committed to progress i have not forgotten their sentence ever since 1996 i always mention it and i think this is what our policy does this time it links the policy in toto to the tradition of indian education systems let me also refer to one point as teachers uh, what we are doing many of this i am going to mention four aspects four stages of teaching and learning 
which could be the summary of indian tradition of they they developed in gurukulas and continues for quite some time and that is like this first one is adhyan all of us know what is adhyan that is what happens in the classrooms in the libraries in others the second aspect was manan once you have heard a lecture you have delivered a lecture give a chance to the learners to think about it what have i learned in the last 40 minutes 50 minutes or one hour and the moment the learner goes into this second aspect manan a couple of questions will arise his mind will active he will like he will have difference of opinions he will like to say something more he like to know something more and then it is the third stage is the chintan which roughly can be said to be something similar to peer learning talk to your friends talk to others talk in groups interact and once you interact many of the things will be clarified you know major universities in 60s and 50s of the last century focused on seminars in where a teacher would interact with six or seven students eight or 10 students and they would have their queries and other things so this adhyan manan chintan were the key and the most significant was the fourth upyog knowledge has a meaning only in our traditional thinking if it can be put to right use for the welfare of the people if it cannot be put to use it has no meaning and this i think is basic thing that determines our role our effort our initiative and also it's a measure of our competence and comprehension and commitment so we go like this but now i come to a more pragmatic thing what the policy says about teachers and this paragraph i must read the teacher must be at the center of the fundamental reforms in education system this is what i have elaborated earlier the new education policy must help reestablish teachers at all levels this is a very significant sentence i will discuss it at one but let me read it reestablish teachers at all levels at the most respected and essential members of our society because they truly shape our next generation of citizens it must do everything to empower teachers he is referring to policy it must do everything to empower teachers and get help and help them to do their job as effectively as possible the new education policy must help recruit the very best and brightest to enter the teaching profession at all levels by ensuring livelihood respect dignity and autonomy while also instilling this in the system basic methods of quality control and accountability this is a complete statement which if understood understood in the right spirit will clearly delineate to every individual teacher what is expected of him and as you know we had a lot of discussion a couple of years ago about the education in finland i also participated in it but what i learned and inferred from all this discussion was i said it also we are not eligible even to talk about it and people dislike this sentence why i said in finland i like something which is not in the curriculum and textbooks which the society has given to the education system in finland the most respected person the most respected category the most respected individual is the teacher there is only one category of vips and that is the teachers everywhere they get respect whether they are primary teachers whether they are university teachers whether they are scholars wherever they are teaching a teacher is to be respected this reestablishing the teacher this uh, the teacher shall be reestablished exactly the traditional respect that indian teacher enjoyed and which many of us had witnessed in our younger days has dissipated there are various reasons and no we cannot go into this most of us things are known to you but a couple of things also i will mention in this 
what can be done to empower teachers if the teacher is satisfied now a teacher cannot be satisfied if he is working as a shiksha karmi or a guru ji are expected to perform all the duties on a small honorarium uncertain of what will happen after few 3 months 4 months and 10 months a teacher cannot ex- be expected to do research if he is working as a guest lecturer in a university or is being paid on lecture based lecture basis this is not this giving respect to the teachers i am happy and satisfied and i have high hopes that one of the things mentioned in the policy is that teacher only regular teacher shall be appointed if this can be achieved in this country i am sure the quality of education will rise at least 15 to 20% without any other additional inputs so this is one thing the other is the administrative system the systems of governance must give due respect to teacher everywhere whether it is the office of the district education officer whether it is the office of the higher education council or the university grants commission and if a teacher comes he has to be given due respect and the other aspect that the society has to consider and all of us have to consider how can we attract the most talented persons to the teaching profession we know that it was that some 60 70 years ago we got the most talented persons now there are so many avenues there are so many other systems which are more attractive and we were not been in a position to say that we are getting the best of the lot but yes we have to try our best in this direction also and we hope that after the policy is implemented this system of appointing people on temporary basis ad hoc basis remuneration basis will vanish it will give a tremendous amount of self respect to the teacher and every teacher who is expected to contribute must be have a self respect of the highest order and one thing that i would mention it all of us this is our role this is our responsibility to see that we to realize we are creating the future of this country you are creating the future of the country you are giving direction to the lives of young persons gandhi ji once wrote that his mother had told him if you can save the life of one person or if you can shape the life of one person your life is successful if you can do it for two if you can do it for more your life is more and more successful then he says teachers can shape the life of not one or two but hundreds and thousands all of us are doing it but let us be conscious of it you are creating the future of the country never forget this sentence even if things are not that are happening the way we would like in the system we shall be doing i would like to mention a particular episode in an international meeting i was after my lecture somebody stood up and said i have stayed in india and i have seen the university system i have seen the uh, school education system i am surprised why the system doesn't break up it doesn't collapse there is so much of disorganization and several people like the question suddenly i had to respond i said indian education system will never collapse why because of the traditional commitment of the teacher at every stage wherever a teacher is there he knows that he is doing a pious work he is helping people to grow and therefore this system will never collapse and i am confident that our teachers who work in the most difficult conditions whether it is a university think of the state level universities which have hardly two or three or five persons are regular faculty members and i am really worried how the implementation of this policy will take place the only hope lies that state governments and central governments will take very urgent steps highly necessary steps to recruit people you can enhance the quality of research quality of every effort only in that line Uh, let me tell you one more thing which i like repeating to audiences whenever i talk that is 
the educational leadership. I hope the new, after the implementation of new policy, education leadership shall be consciously developed at every level. When I was a young person, my cousin, the vice chancellor, principal, was of a person who is respected by the society, who is a fountainhead of knowledge, scholarship, and who is a gyani. Kings and emperors take dust from the feet of the acharya of the gurukulas. That is what can bring us up to the level of Finland and others. He was the supreme person, the knowledgeable, the gyani was the supreme person. We have to go back to that stage. The Kulpati should have the highest level of respect. The Acharyas should have the highest level of respect from the society. And the term Acharya, in fact, it defines all the roles of the teacher. Acharyas are the icons. Think of a school child when the age of seven years, when he goes. And after a few days, after a month or so, he tells the parents, Oh, Madam ne jo kaha hai, wo sahi hai, aap galat kare. The first icon of a child is the teacher. And this continues till he reaches the university. And many of us shaped our lives because of our teachers, the way they were conducting themselves, the way they were growing up, the way they were create, contributing to generation of knowledge, the way they were dealing with other faculty members, the way they were helping the newly recruited faculty members. All this we learned from them and this is something that matters. Now here, I would like to quote from something published by Vivekanand Institute of Human Excellence, Hyderabad, on a scholar and a gyani. Kindly permit me to read it because we are referring to Taxila and Nalanda and Vikramshila. And we want to go back to that level or even higher than that. So now, how shall we proceed as teachers? I quote from this, this uh, publication, Scholarship and wisdom are not one and the same. A scholar is but a pandit without any wisdom. I would say a scholar could be a pandit without any wisdom. And a jnani is wise, sometimes without being a scholar. All bookish knowledge is scholarship. There is no guarantee that scholarship will certainly lead to wisdom. Nor is there any certainty that a scholar will bosom as a wise person. A scholars may be large in number, almost in every country and age, but wise ones are rare, here and there, now and then. They are born to guide mankind. Sri Ramana and Sri Ramakrishna are Gyanis. Adi Sankara is both a scholar and a Gyani. It is wisdom and not a scholarship that keeps us always calm and tranquil, serene and sober, peaceful and blissful. It keeps us above want. So it is better to be wise if we are to choose between the two. Now here what I wanted to, why I have quoted this, is with a purpose. You see, I give an example in which many teachers have relished. You see, when the last Alamos experiment, the atomic bomb explosion experimental was, took place in 1945 in Los Alamos, it was utilization of the highest knowledge available at that stage. But then what happened? While the scientists were thinking of how to utilize this knowledge for the welfare of mankind, those in power were thinking of something else. They had the authority and Hiroshima happened, Nagasaki happened. Knowledge can be misutilized. Knowledge can damage. Knowledge alone can damage. And therefore, I I like the statement uh, uh, which I read from Burton Russell. Russell said, and this is something very important for uh, as teachers for us to know, man has no chance of survival if knowledge only remains knowledge, 
بٹ اف وی کوڈ ٹرانسفارم نالج ان ٹو وزڈم ہی ووڈ ناٹ اونلی سروائو بٹ ول بی ایبل ٹو اسینڈ ٹو گریٹر اینڈ گریٹر ہائٹس آف اچیومنٹس ان فیکٹ آئی ریڈ دس فسٹ اینڈ دین آئی واز تھنکنگ ہاؤ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دس دین آئی دس ہیروشما کیم ٹو مائی نالج ٹو مائی مائنڈ نالج الون کوڈ ڈو سو مچ آف ٹیمنٹس اینڈ اٹ از ڈوئنگ ٹوڈے آلسو وی ہیو ناؤ سو مچ آف ایٹامک ویپنس نیوکلیئر ویپنس and the whole world is watching ukraine is happening and therefore it is the wisdom it is the vivek that matters as fact, teachers at every stage we have from information knowledge we have to go towards vivek and going towards vivek means we have to be vivek shail ourselves if you go through the policy everywhere it is this is the expectation multidisciplinary disciplinarity multidisciplinarity will require you to broaden your horizons it would expect you not to remain confined only to a particular subject i often say that a professor of physics is not only a professor of physics he is a professor of physics and value education professor of physics and character building professor of physics and ethics morals and values This is the concept that emerges from the national education policy for teachers. We have to broaden our horizons. Therefore, Bertrand Russell has cautioned us. Others have also done it. That we have to be very particular. And he also says one thing. And this, I think, is very significant when critical thinking, analytical thinking aspects have been discussed in great detail in the policy. Now, as teachers in universities, we find certain inconvenient learners and if you go through properly a proper analysis as many of you have been doing you will find some of the, those un, uh, uneasy learners may have certain issues which if solved could bring out the best out of them they may be brilliant they may be very sharp and this is our role our role is to ensure the individual differences are properly understood and inputs are provided accordingly we can do it if you have to look after analytical thinking the things this is the aspect which you i have derived from russell's statement the example of hiroshima and nagasaki and which you can derive in your own manner from anywhere but yes our focus is on learning it has been said that assessment procedures examination systems have to change and we shall not have any place for rote learning what has been traditionally in our uh, concept very nice but first you have to prepare teachers who know how to evaluate who can evaluate and who should be innovating on how to evaluate the total achievements of the learner at every stage how transitioning from marks and grades to a higher level of assessment of the individual's growth and personality is not an easy task. And this, all our tasks are not easy. We have to strive very hard to understand and then put before the society, before the young persons, what changes we shall bring down in assessment and learning. Now, this policy also has a lot for us to understand in terms of the philosophy of education as it has developed in India. I have mentioned this, the four terms, Adhyan, Manan, Chintan, Upyog. And along with that, I could also mention Prasht, Pratiprasht, Pariprasht, the great dialogical tradition. And I think I can also go into other things, but many of you are familiar and uh, those details can be discussed. But Those three terms were wonderful terms. Now, they, I also mentioned about Rishirin, Daivarin and Pitrin. All this links to the Indian tradition of knowledge, generation and creation and transfer. But now let me come to some recent past. And there I would like to mention what is Indian ethos, what teachers must understand. What is the Indian ethos before teachers? All of us know about Gandhi. Gandhi gave us a three by three matrix. Head, hand and heart. body mind and spirit self society and nature let me repeat 
ٹو برنگ آؤٹ دی بیسٹ آؤٹ آف ہیڈ ہینڈ اینڈ ہارٹ ٹو برنگ دی بیسٹ آؤٹ آف باڈی مائنڈ اینڈ اسپرٹ اینڈ ٹو برنگ دی بیسٹ آؤٹ آف سیلف سوسائٹی اینڈ نیچر اٹ از سیم ان دا براڈر پرسپیکٹ از سیم اٹ از پٹ ان ڈفرینٹ میٹر گاندھیز کانٹریبیوشن ٹو ایجوکیشن اسٹل ہیز اے ریلیونس بیسک ایجوکیشن یوز ٹو ٹاک اینڈ ٹوڈے وی سی دیر ول نو ڈسٹنکشن بٹوین ووکیشنل ایجوکیشن اینڈ اکیڈمک ایجوکیشن لبرل ایجوکیشن اٹ ول ریکوائر ٹریمنڈس ایفرٹ آن دی پارٹ آف اس دی ٹیچرس ٹو انٹیگریٹ دیز ٹو اینڈ جنریٹ انٹرسٹ ان بوتھ وی نیڈ ریئلی اسکالرس اینڈ گیانیز ہو گو ٹو دی ہائیسٹ لیول آف ریسرچ ریسرچز وی آر پیپل ہو کین یوٹیلائز دی ریسرچز اینڈ ٹرانسفارم دیم ان ٹو پریکٹیکل گیجٹس اینڈ سچ ایپلیکیشنز دیٹ ول ہیلپ دی سوسائٹی and gandhi always used to say the last man in the line vivekan the delos commission report which i referred to is titled learning the treasure within when i saw it for such for the first time the immediate tinkering of mind went to swami vivekananda's uh, statement education is manifestation of perfection already in man it's a wonderful thing Every learning is within the learner. 